Christmas table showstopper, his throwback roasted ham and pineapple. I've got to start mine because you've gone to a great deal of trouble to take the white off my egg. Well, most of it. Most of it, yeah. <laughs> but um, I thought that might not be too offensive, just a little bit. I can't, I cannot do the white of an egg. No, I understand but, that. But... Look this, this is a, so egg on on ham. Right now, oh, ham and eggs. Ham like and one eggs. Of the with combos. pineapple. Right, yeah, it's a bit that. of a now. Listen, years and years ago, when I was a young chef, some of the retro stuff we we had, and we had duck and orange, duck with cherries, and we had ham and pineapple, and it was here, here it is here. Can I just show that again, please? And you'll see it there. Now you'll see. It's, that's what we used to do, and that was a buffet at Christmas time, Christmas night. I, I mean, young... it does look spectacular. <laughs> when I was a young chef, and my mum used to do it as well, and uh, it was all quite classic. Now, we've moved it on slightly, but before we get on to that, I want to talk about the hams to start with. Mm. Now, a lot of, if, years ago, we'd buy a ham like this with a bone in, and this ham would take around about two and a half hours to cook as a simmer. OK, you can also wrap it in foil and bake it in the oven for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. It won't be as moist or as tender, but you, it will certainly cook it. And the way to tell it was, we always used to say, when this, this bone here, which is called the top bone, we used to call it the H bone there, well, when you can pull that bone out, that thing was cooked. And you, ah. or you'd always leave it in the stock you cooked it in overnight to keep it really, really juicy. Can I ask a question? By the way. Like, even before you even got that thing near a pot of boiling water yeah. or an oven, Smoked, unsmoked, what cut, leg? Right, a gammon is cut from the leg. Yeah. Okay, smoking's up to you. Bear in mind, a lot of it's on the outside, it's not hot smoked right the way through. A lot of people don't like smoke because it's too strong. Mm. Now, if you're boiling that ham, that smoke will recede slightly. If you're baking it, it will still be there. I find it can be oversmoked. It's a bit like smoked salmon for me, it can be too smoky. Mm -hmm. So if you're a bit unaware about that or a bit unsure, Get it unsmoked. And you'd alter the cooking <coughs> time if, if, the, if the bone was in. Yes. So, on my website, I have a full cooking time of how to cook a ham from small 500 grams up to two and a half kilos. So, it, it doesn't vary that much. Hour, hour and a bit, generally speaking, yeah. you pretty much get away with it. However, a lot of butchers these days actually cook them for you and they're actually cooked in a vac pack. So they'll cook them in a, in a rationale oven overnight. I think it's 68 or 71 degrees for 10 hours or something. And that and, keeps and it, it stays really Exactly. So they don't open it, it stays actually in the Do side. you still have to soak a ham? Uh, it depends. Again, now, if you're buying a ham that is, is brined, possibly, uh, and the golden rule about that was you won't really know how salty the ham is until you've actually started cooking it. So the golden rule was you put your ham in your pot, you bring it to the boil, you simmer it for around about five minutes, Taste the water. If it's salty. Taste, taste salty, take it out and do it again. But you should soak Change it. the water? Yes, completely. Right. Now, some hams, if you soak them overnight, you may need to add a bit more salt to the water. Uh -huh. e oh, even though. Gosh. But you can only do it by tasting it after that five minutes. OK. Right. That aside, this one is cooked. I thought it would be a bit, bit retro this year. So, again, so we've talked, spoken about pineapple. So this is cooked ham. And what you need to do is cut deep cuts across the ham like that. Mind your fingers. OK, and then you want to go roughly the same size as the can of the pineapple, like And if you so. trim the sort of skin off, is that just a thin yeah. layer of fat? This is skin, absolutely, and All the right. fat is on there. And then what you do is roughly where you've cut it, you want to put your pineapple slices on. Now... It's got eyes. It's got eyes. It's got okay. eyes. Now, the thing about this, say, about this also is, it looks like it's not going to stick on, but the glaze that you actually make sticks it on after you put the cocktail sticks in. So we threw this open and Go said, on. you know, what about ham and pineapple or yep. you know, sort of pineapple on pizza, that sort of thing. Mm. Louis says, I love ham and pineapple together. It's delicious. Mm, you're going to have to carry on. Dawn says, oh, Phil, you're talking my language. Big hey. yes from me. Sharon says, ham, eggs and chips. Yes, ham yes. and pineapple, absolutely not. Sharon, I'm with you. <laughs> Gillian says, totally love ham and pineapple together. Charlie says, love pineapple on ham or with cheese, hot or cold, yes. Sue says, yum, I love pineapple in a stir-fry. Stir-fry? Would you put pineapple in a stir-fry? Well, I guess... No, I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't, but I know what you mean, like, with, like, a cashew nut. I sort of get that more than this, funnily enough. Um, the ham looks great, but a big pineapple is a no-no for me, Sally, says Mel. no. Pineapple is best cold, straight from the tin. I'm with Holly. Exactly. Stick with me, But Sally. on a bit of ham. With an egg. <laughs> it does work. Now, Look at so, that, what have you made? So you've made a hedgehog. Just, you've made a hedgehog. Now, the thing about this, it looks a bit weird, but what you, when you make the glaze and stick it on and bake it, it actually sticks on there and then you can take them off afterwards. Talking of which, here I, this is my glaze this year, so we're using <laughs> pineapple... It looks so funny. It looks like something <laughs> from the future, not it's from the past. We used to call it a Sputnik ham yeah, years it does ago. Look like that. So here's my glaze this year. Here I've got pineapple jam. There we go. Pineapple jam. 
into Did a you pan. make that or can you just buy I, that? I bought it, I'll be very honest with you, I didn't make it. Life's a bit too short sometimes. <laughs> But I don't think I've ever seen pineapple jam. No, it's, it's not often seen, but you can get it. It's actually quite nice. It, yeah. You can get anything on the internet nowadays. Of course you can. <laughs> Brown sugar, in that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Lime, she just move on for that one. <laughs> Bit of smoked paprika, <laughs> touch of water, pineapple juice. Oh. Right, Ollie. <laughs> Bit of pineapple juice in there. Now, here's my thing. Go to tamarind. Very, very sour. Beautiful. In actual fact, when we were filming a grenade a couple of weeks ago, I had a tamarind drink, mm. a sweetened tamarind drink for lunch. It was delicious. Tamarind in the goes, two crumbly stock cubes. Mm -hmm. Okay, in they go, break them up and in they go. And you want to just boil this down for about three to four minutes. And I do add chilli jam to that as well, because I want a bit of kick. Right. Because it is quite rich and it is quite um, fatty. So we will add a little bit of chilli jam in there as well. Now, this, this is for 10 to 12 people, so it does actually go a long way. If you want to make it slightly smaller, you can use the half joint a or a nice quarter kick, joint. Bill. Pardon? It's got a lovely kick. Oh, it has, yeah, but it's, yeah. But it's not... Not too much. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then you want to boil that down for around about five to ten minutes, and it'll end up this one just here. Now, purely because of, because of time, I've obviously had to um, get this one here. So there it is. Literally from that to that. It takes ten minutes. And then what you need to do is put half, not all of it, half of it just goes on top of the ham, like that. And you want to put on roughly half into an oven, 220 degrees, 200 degrees, something like that, six, gas six to five to six. And you want to just let that gently roast through, OK? Let it roast through and then keep adding the sauce back onto it, OK? Mm -hmm. And let it glaze completely. After that amount of time, you'll have this one here, OK? And there it is. And you're ah. Now, if you let that set, then you can take out the cocktail sticks. When you say set, do you just mean go cold? Yes. Right. So the sugar sets it. So Go then, for, sorry, Phil, then the pineapple will stick to it because it's got sugar. So you've got, have you got half of your glaze left? Yes. Right. So uh, you keep going, and then the other half becomes a dipping sauce, but later on. Oh. So you slice it and you've had it on top of your bit of fried right. oh, there. So it's see. half and half. That's a good idea. Well, you're just not wasting it, but the whole point is, is that it, it does pretty much, all these things will stay on there. Now, when you carve a ham, I'm going to take this off here, you always carve this way, which is the from the ham hock down, so you cut across the joint. Not this way, because you're cutting with the grain. You cut across the grain. Now, right. I'll just take this off here and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So if you cut across here... Do you start that end? You will start this end. Oh. OK, and then you cut around the bone as you go down. It's with leg of lamb, with leg of pork, with anything you like. And you'll end up this lovely... Look at that. that I love this part here, the, well, yeah. the top of it, which is absolutely delicious. Now... It's so soft. Have you, ha have you had a bit with the pineapple? No, I have not. Are you going to have a bit of the pineapple? Well, I am now, aren't I? Yes, go on, Holly. I, I know, I know. I mean, give it a go. It's hardly a bush ducker try. <laughs> That's a classic exactly. on there. Hmm. Go on. Just as I thought, completely weird. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> that doesn't make sense to my mouth. Right, OK. My yep. mouth says no. My but 70s in mouth says In conjunction with yes. the ham, doesn't it cut the richness of the ham? The sweetness? I don't think I fattiness. want to cut the richness of the ham. Okay. Like it just sort of, it's, it's like I've eaten something and taken a swig of juice. <laughs> like I just need the yeah, well, that's pretty good. to exist on their own. Yeah, well, you're probably right, actually. What? Am so, I? Yeah, you're probably yes. right. Yes, you are right. What's, However, the, what's the veg that I'm Right, I'll on to that now. So, bubble and squeak here, and I'm using, um, over here, I've got some chestnuts that we've cooked. Now, I, I use frozen chestnuts for bubble and squeak. I think they break down really, really well. And my youngest daughter will only eat frozen ones, she won't eat fresh ones. Okay. <laughs> and then I've got a mixture here of roast potatoes, mashed potatoes, chestnuts, spring onions in the oven. So this one is a cross between a bubble and squeak yeah. and a hash. Mm. So it's nice and loose. You can really, put an egg really in if you good. really, really want to. On that goes into um, there. This is, um, this is a triumph. Yeah, though. really. I absolutely yummy. love it. So, Holly, are you a convert? Well. What do? You know what I'm talking about. Pineapple? Yeah. No. no OK. Mm, but the ham is delicious, as is the bubble and squeak. And I love the flavour of all the tamarind and stuff. You're just trying just to move it on the... slightly. Just move, move it back. It on slightly. <laughs> I think it works really well. It's up to you. But yeah, any glaze, we did a lime one last year, so mm. all it on the website. Beautiful, I it's beautiful. It's absolutely say. delicious, mm. Phil. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank, you. Nice Thank, you. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm. Right, for details of today's recipe and more delicious ideas from our chefs, download the free This Morning app.